Greetings, my friends. I want to thank you all for subscribing. I want to thank all of my channel members for supporting me in this endeavor to save pop culture. And if you are not subscribed, please consider supporting this channel. We need you. Thank you. Greetings, my friends. I am Dictor Van Doomcock, the future ruler of Earth, broadcasting from my hidden base at the center of the Earth, and I am here today with a report that apparently I live rent-free in the heads of Disney executives, and the mere mention of my name is forbidden inside the executive suites of Disney. I was first notified of this last week, when a longtime source who typically feeds me information about what's happening behind the scenes with Star Trek contacted me with an update from a friend of theirs inside Lucasfilm. It seems that Doomcock has gotten under their skin, my friends, and so like Pharaoh in the Ten Commandments, Iker has proclaimed, Let the name Doomcock be stricken from every obelisk. Let the name Doomcock be erased from every tablet. Mine is the unmentionable name inside the Magic Kingdom, my friends. And what's worse, one particular comment made to Bob Iger about me by an angry investor was particularly galling, according to a source, and I will reveal that comment to you all at the end of this video, just as it was reported to me. But even so, after all this time, I still find myself a bit confused as to why the mere mention of my name is so triggering to them. I know. Go figure, right? I mean, you only call Disney a non-profit company obsessed with agenda over money. You proclaimed it's time to stop watching Disney Star Wars. You leaked critical information about Indiana Jones 5 that screwed up all of their plans. You sing songs about canceling Disney Plus. You tried to stop the demolition of Splash Mountain. Hey, what's not to love, buddy? I'm being sarcastic, of course. Well, I, for one, am being sincere. From a certain point of view, someone speaking harsh truths to you is ultimately more of an ally than a friend who just tells you what you want to hear. If Disney was a for-profit company, then they'd be pleased about my videos because they pay all this money for focus groups and market research and test screenings to get into the heads of their audience members, but here is Doomcock providing all of these services and audience feedback for free. A for-profit company wants to hear customer feedback, criticism, and praise. The few times that Disney has done something right, like The Mandalorian Season 2, Werewolf by Night, or Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, I've been right there with the praise, and plenty of it. But each time I've praised Disney, they've squandered it, and doubled down on the things that alienate fans and kill profits. The Mando Season 2 finale was a thing of beauty, of perfection, that had fans proclaiming with some justification that Star Wars at last was saved. <coughs> Wrong. They undid all of that amazing progress before even the first episode of Mando Season 3 could air. And Mando Season 3 itself was nothing but garbage mixed in with a smattering of sad mediocrity. They never did anything else with the amazing Werewolf by Night one-off special. Guardians of the Galaxy is pretty much dead following the third movie and Gun's departure. No, Doomcock gives credit where credit is due. He gives honest appraisals and honest reactions, and that's information that companies need if they're going to thrive. But alas, Disney wants fans to cheer their woke decisions, support their incompetent creative failures, and celebrate the stunning lack of basic quality all across the board. Doomcock is no cheerleader, but a harsh critic who demands nothing but excellence. But sadly, Disney is shit out of excellence, and thus apparently they hate me because I won't tell them what they want to hear. I tell them the truth and the truth is harsh in their Mickey Mouse ears. So tell us, Doomcock, what have you heard about Disney's attitude toward you? Pray tell, are you persona non grata in the hallowed halls of Disney? Very well, O Skull of Calderon. Let me tell you the saga of this revelation and give us all a good laugh. So last week, a longtime source who normally shares Star Trek Insider info with me 
contacted me over X, formerly known as Twitter. From time to time, this source is contacted by a friend inside Lucasfilm with tidbits for me to use or not as I see fit, and this time here's what this source had to say, quote, Hey, Lucasfilm guy says Disney CEOs will not speak the name Doomcock, and if you said it, you would probably be fired and blackballed. He said they call him Buckethead. But Buckethead? <laughs> Indeed, Harvey Cthulhu. And I wear that name with pride. Folks, as a reader of old comic books, I know that Stan Lee called many of his superheroes by similar names. Daredevil was Hornhead, Iron Man was Shellhead, Spider-Man was Webhead, so I don't view that as an insult, but a term of honor. Because if the big wigs at Disney refuse to even say my name, hey, that means I've succeeded in making an impact and being heard. I knew this was the case, of course. After all, She-Hulk took aim at me during an episode, trying to mock me, but only succeeding in boosting me and elevating my profile. You know you've made an impact when you're drawing flack. That means you're over the target, as I was with my Indiana Jones 5 coverage, which prompted Indy 5 director James Mangold to call me out by name on Twitter as a troll and basement dweller, even as report after report I was making about Indy 5 was being confirmed, not just by mainstream news outlets, but in one case, John Williams himself. The hashtag Doomcock was right has trended on Twitter, as has the name Doomcock itself. All of these things indicate that Doomcock has made a significant impact in the war to save pop culture. Even so, I am still a bit surprised that they refuse to speak my name, as if someone saying it three times might make me appear in the mirror of Iger's special bathroom. So while I was tickled by this report, I wanted to see if I could verify it before sharing it with you all. So yesterday, I spoke directly to one of my most senior and trusted Hollywood spies. We discussed various rumors coming in from our network of sources, and then towards the end, I told him about this tip I had gotten that Disney will not even say my name or allow it to be said. And as I was telling this, a grin came over my Hollywood spy's face, and he looked like he wanted to interrupt, but he let me play it out, and when I came to the part about Buckethead, he laughed and nodded. He confirmed that, yeah, they've known this for a long time. It's absolutely true, he confirmed. I upset them so much, they can't even bear to say my name. And he also added, independently, that if you mention my name directly, it can lead to you getting canned, just like the individual I reported on several years ago, who made the mistake of saying, get woke, go broke, during a meeting, and was summarily fired. I guess they're kind of tetchy that way. They're tetchy, as you say, for two reasons, Doomcock. You're too accurate when it comes to the rumors you report, and you're funny. Your videos are loaded not simply with angry ranting, but wit. And there is nothing SJWs hate worse than humor, because they don't understand it. They have no sense of humor, and they have no idea how to counteract a humorous attack. Indeed, their rebuttals only make them bigger targets for more humor, and the cycle of abuse goes on. I think you may be onto something, O Skull of Calderone. Yes, they will not allow the name Doomcock to be spoken in their presence, but wait, there's more. Apparently, Disney investors watch my channel, and they are not happy with the common sense view I'm laying out. Indeed, investors are asking uncomfortable questions, questions that Disney does not want aired. Here is a comment, a rumored comment, that an investor reportedly made to Iger himself. This is what my source said, quote, I cannot say this is true, but the rumor is an angry stockholder told Bob if Disney had two brain cells to rub together, they would fire him and make Buckethead the new CEO. Fucking hysterical, unquote. 
<laughs> Holy shit. Well, it's true, isn't it? You're not a business guy, Doomcock, but you at least know that to prosper in business, generally you want to provide a product or service that's in demand. And there's no demand for the sequel trilogy, no demand for the MCU, no demand for Disney Plus Kids programming loaded with LGBTQIA MOUSE propaganda. As CEO, you'd at least raise the quality of movies and shows and stop trying to ram shit people don't want down their throats and have them pay for it. No, Harvey, those things I would not do. Personally, I think I'm one of the best friends that Disney investors have because I give valuable customer feedback. The only problem is that feedback is not what Disney wants to hear. And thus, if you're ever in the halls of Disney, speak my name at your own risk. Fair warning from the future ruler of Earth. <laughs> From the center of the earth, this is Dictor Van Doomcock bidding you all, my friends, stay angry. Ha 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 